Hey folks, it's Thursday, March 18th, and this is your daily forecast. So the first thing you're going to do is to head over to Pop Writing Check-In 1 and just share uh, what you learned uh, for your pearls of wisdom from chapters 2 and 3 of Blazer's book and how that relates specifically to the film that you're talking about, the connections you're seeing. So go ahead and do that. Once you've done that, read and respond to at least two of your peers' posts. Now the rest of today is an, uh, an in-class writing day. There are going to be two of those in a row. The very first thing I want you to do is to check out uh, the assignment to prompt, make sure that you read it carefully and that you're following the instructions. From there, it's not a bad idea to check out this template. The assignment to template um, not only shows you what exactly, like the formatting is exactly what I want it to be, but it also kind of explains what needs to be in your proposal, um, making sure that you're adding the references here, um, like the movie that you're you know, analyzing, right? So for most of you, that's either going to be a movie or uh, a, the, a series, right? So there's that. Um, then I've got obviously some stuff for your annotated bibli bibliography. Remember, your annotated mm -hmm. bibliography needs two academic sources, one annotated bibliography entry on Blazor, and then another one on an outside source that's related to your film, okay? So um, stuff. Uh, this kind of gives you uh, how to... Uh, analyze, uh, or how to analyze, good grief, um, how to write annotated bibliography entries. So remember that you're picking to use the ones that I've given you in class. If for some reason you're like, I feel like I need a different one, you know, run it by me first. Don't just sort of pick an academic article that, you know, like, because I could, I can help you and I want to make sure that it works. All right. Um, remember that each an, uh, annotated bibliography entry for an article should be two paragraphs. Um, and so this is just kind of like, stand in kind of like me describing um, that. But there's another one right here I just kind of did for the Tobin et al. piece because probably for a lot of you, Tobin et al. would be a good piece to choose. And that's simply because um, there that article talks about so many different, uh, how Disney and related animation studios tend to um, illustrate various groups of people. So it might end up being one that's useful to you, right? So just sort of keep that in mind. Um, I do give some guidelines here that are applicable no matter which articles you choose. Um, your annotated uh, bibliography entry first needs to identify um, the author's thesis correctly. And remember that you don't even have to guess at that because I've already done that in each of the articles. I'm like, hey, this is a thesis, right? So you're just kind of rephrasing that in your own words, right? Like this is what they're arguing, right? And then from there, your job is to identify two claims that the um, uh, authors of the article are sort of forwarding about, um, you know, something like, for instance, Disney tends to um, represent men as having, um, you know, no control over their emotions. And, you know, you might talk about how, I don't know, uh, the prince's father in Cinderella throws shit around the room because he's mad his son isn't married, right? I think that's one of the examples they gave. So it's like a claim and then a, a supporting um, piece of information. And then a second claim would be, you know, I don't know, something like uh, Disney tends to represent elderly people as being, um, you know, mentally unfit. And you might pull from like the example of how uh, that that Tobin et al. use to support their claim when they talk about how, um, you know, Beauty and the Beast uh, has uh, Belle's dad locked up and that's just super duper normal, right? But whatever examples that you, like the claims that you zero in on and the examples that you choose, right? Remember that, right? These are the claims that the art authors are making and the examples that they're using. The reason why I'm asking you to identify claims or concepts and then the examples that they use is because the idea here is to pick things that specifically rate, relate to your topic. Right. So sort of keep that in mind. Um, like if and, and they might be different things. So if I were looking at um, something like the Owl House. Right. I know that the main character, Luz, is Dominican American. And so I would probably want to kind of skim to the part of the Tobin article where it talks about how Latinos are, you know, represented in children's films. And I might also want to, like, check out how either. Disney has talked about orientation because Luz is bi, or I might want to talk about how Disney tends to represent um, girls and women, right? Does this sort of make sense? But the idea is to like focus in on concepts in, uh, that they're talking about and examples that they're using that like kind of 
are north stars for you, right? And then in the, so once, so again, that first paragraph thesis, two claims and, and a supporting example for each one. In the next paragraph, the idea is to say, okay, now this is how specifically the stuff that I talked about in my first paragraph is gonna help me analyze my film, right? And that's where you kind of switch to talking about you and like brainstorming how this source is specifically gonna help you. And the key here is like, you're not trying to get brownie points from me. You're literally writing notes to yourself, right? Like, hey, these ideas on this page, this is gonna be super important for me as I'm analyzing, okay? So again, make use of this template, okay? So read the assignment, read the template and task one. Then from there, what I want you to do is make a plan and, um, and uh, go ahead and stick to that plan, okay? So, um, these are a list of things that you might need to um, get start doing, right? Um, and the list is pretty straightforward, just kind of things that you might want to work on. Um, there's one thing that I'm not adding related to the blazer thing because we're not yet done reading the blazer thing. Um, so there's a particular task that I'm going to fold back in in another day. So just this isn't a complete list. That's my point, okay? So yeah, just kind of look at the list and be like, okay, what can I get done in class today, right? Like choose those things, that's your plan. And then for the rest of class, you're gonna work on that, okay? So once you figure out the tasks, like pick two or three tasks, you're like, man, this is what I'm gonna do today. Then head over to pop writing, check in zero, and then just be like, hey, this is what I'm gonna work on today. And then, you know, just kind of read a couple of your peers posts and be like, yeah, go team. Like, just be encouraging because like writing's a lonely process, right? And then um, in your third task, you're just really spending the day, the rest of the day writing, right? So I would recommend stopping um, about 20 minutes before uh, the end of class, uh, depending on when you're there. So, and then get to a stopping place uh, and then just go ahead and make note of what you've accomplished and then head back over to the pop writing check in zero and just share what you've done and then just kind of read and respond to some of your peers posts to like kind of cheer them on right um, so there's that now for homework you are going to return to um, the uh, blazer book and you are going to uh, read chapters three, four, and six. Um, and these ones are going to end up being um, really helpful. Um, one's talking about like storyboarding, and that's really a really important chapter, talking about shot composition. But also the one on color is going to be helpful, as will sound, because those are all like s strategies on top of illustration and dialogue and plot that help, uh, that are like rhetorical tools that um, you're your filmmakers are using to kind of help shape your perspective of, of, of characters and so forth. All right. So read and take notes on those. Remember that the notes that you're taking are really about how it relates to your film. Okay. And then once you've done that, what I want you to do is to rewatch uh, the film uh, or clip that you are going to analyze. And again, make sure that you're, that whatever you, that whatever you've taken from the blazer piece, you know, like that you're using, you're basically using the blazer piece and what you've learned from it today as a lens for like really thinking about the choices, right? Um, so like take some time and do that. It's going to really, really help you make sure that you're taking some notes on that. Um, so there's that. Um, that's what you're going to be doing. Okay. Um, that's homework. All right. Cool beans.